Welcome to the curious case of the case statement. Hey, I'm Eric, and uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how the case statement works. Um, and it might surprise you because it actually does not work the way case a case statement works in Pascal, um, or pretty much in anything else. Um, I recently discovered this because I was implementing support for case statement in my AL compiler, and uh, I realized that, hey, this is kind of neat, or is it? Anyway, so uh, so follow along, and, and I, will, I will show you what I discovered. Um, but let's actually just start with, uh, here is some, here is, a blank ale thingy. So let's just make sure that we all understand the case statement. If you're coming from another language, um, you would think about a switch statement uh, called case in, in ale. And um, well, I've created a, a variable called h, so I can do case h of, and um, we could do something like zero and do message, uh, welcome to the world. We could do one, two, two, six, message, uh, not in school. Uh, we could do seven till 18, message, oops, in school. Um, we could do 19 to 99, working, kind of, hey. So that, that's a great case statement. So I could, I could go up here and say, let's do uh, h equal 16. How about that? I run this piece of code, we publish. Come on, PC, we're publishing. And in school, 16, so that seems to work. Um, so in other languages, what would happen if I went in and say, okay, I'll, I'll add a case for, for 16. And do message suite uh, 16. So now in, in other languages, we would get a compiler error because the you know the syntax for what we put here in the identifier for the option is a constant and clearly now 16 is covered by two cases here so we if we compile this this is fine we can run it And we're still in school. Uh, we could then, let's try to do one thing here. Let's grab this and then put it up here. So now it's before the 7 to 18. I'll run again. So now it got the sweet 16. So clearly the order of, of this is interesting. I could also try to add another option. So now it says, hey, you got the same option twice, mister. That's not going to work. But if we have the range, it doesn't matter. But that is actually not at all the reason for this video. So, so now, now we have a common understanding of, of the case statement and, and there's nothing, you know, at this at this point, unless you're very new to AL, nothing is new here. This is this is the case statement. Um, but if we go and look at the definition, and this this is what I did. So case statement has the following syntax: value set one, value set two, value set n. We have an else statement, and we can have multiple statements in here. So apart from this, this else which has an implied begin end added to it is, is kind of weird and, and, and is truly the, the, 
the odd one out in Pascal that we have this else and then we have multiple statements here. Anyway, but value set, what is a value set? So if we go down here, do -ba -da -ba -da -da, uh, then it says, and value set must be an expression or range. An expression. Hang on. And this is where that, that if I grab, you know, uh, I grab over here like that. This is, this is, uh, this is actually Sherlock Holmes teaching Pascal. Uh, and the book is from, the book is from 82. Uh, and, and if I look up the, uh, in here, the, uh, a case statement, then we get something about this is a, a, a value we have before the colon. Uh, and and that's the way it was in Turbo Pascal and, and anywhere else I have been programming Pascal. Uh, but here it can be an expression. So if we go back into this one again and say, okay, what about if this one is eight plus eight? Uh, and then let's add one for 16. So let's make sure that we can uh, identify this one as the eight plus eight. So now we have written an expression. And, and this is where, when, when I realized this, I say, what? And, uh, Now we got the eight plus eight as the result. And maybe all of you knew this and then let me know in the comments below and say, hey Eric, you need to you need to learn AL. But but I said, what? You can add an expression as so so here here is here is I was I was thinking about okay, so how do I how do I create an effective um case statement uh, how do i compile it the best way so it's the fastest to execute and i was working with you know with a hash table of values so so i would hash the values uh, and and then use a a a, a table look up to figure out what where to jump the code um, all sort of very clever things that i totally threw out the window well i didn't throw them out the window because i was on a plane but Hey, there's no way to optimize this. So we could do another thing here. Let's, so so check this out. So let's forget this one for a second here. Go away. All this code go away. So let's create let's create a function here. Oh, procedure. Oh man, procedure. Well, let's call it test, and it could take an integer, right? That's fine, and it will return an integer. And how about we just return the one we get? So now we have called a function. So now I could go up here and say, well, case h of test zero, then message, welcome to the world, test, one message or well, learn to, to walk test 16 message sweet 16 and we could do a quick else here just message anything else And if we run this, I, I, I'm pretty sure you can guess what happens. That we do get the sweet 16. But the only way it can figure that out would be if we uh, 
let's put a message in the in the test function and see what happens here. So you can see when, when <laughs> this is this is actually also funny. See when you have a lot of messages, they all get the. Uh, so if there's a message and you add a message onto a message, they all get the, the drop shadow thingy and uh, it's just compounding the shadow. So the more messages you have, the more um, the more dramatic it looks. Testing one, testing two, testing 16, sweet 16. Testing one, zero, testing one, testing three, 16. So for some reason we get it twice, what did I do? Um, that's actually interesting. Can we? That was that was weird. Anyway, what what if what if we what if we do this with the debugger? How how is this gonna show up in the debugger? Let's try that. And we got a break here. So let's do, I'll do, go into, so step into that's F11. So I'll do F11, we get to the case. So now we're here, let's uh, turn locals on so we can see now I is zero. So that's clearly testing that one, I'll hit and then we'll exit again and we are still in the case so now we are getting i equal one and out of that we go back to the case now we're testing 16 getting out of that one and now we should get to message switch 16 we get out of that one and then we get into all sorts of crap here. So I'll hit a five, and for some reason we're getting it again. Not quite sure why we get on open face twice, uh, but it goes through the same thing again. And three times, wow. That is actually very weird. Why is our code suddenly executing three times? Okay, okay. Let's let's just sanity check here. Let me, if you know what goes on, let me know in the comments below. I've removed this message here and run again because when we did this before, we only got one message, right? Oh, sorry, breakpoint, I'll just hit a five, a five, a five. We get it twice, uh, th three times now. Am I losing my mind? On open page, this is clearly only gonna get called once. Okay, let's just for fun, see what happens if you say that H is zero. Oh, I'm still forgetting that I have a breakpoint. I'll actually remove the breakpoint. Maybe it's the debugger that is messing up. Welcome to the world to three times. And we should go back here and go into customers. Welcome to the world once. This is weird. This is, this is funky. So if I do this and say age 16, 
and I deploy without the debugger. So controller five is run without the debugger. I only get this once if I run with the debugger with no breakpoints. Sorry, this video is, is suddenly taking, I get one. I add the breakpoint and I deploy again with the breakpoint. Isn't this strange? Or am I right now chasing a ghost that uh, we got the breakpoint? I'll just hit a five, I hit a five, I hit a five. I get three messages. I'll move open page run three times. Huh. Well, if you got an explanation why that is happening, I will read your comments below. Maybe you need to subscribe. Uh, because there'll probably be other videos. Anyway, the funny thing is that that so so in reality, what is happening here? We could have just and say done at say if h equals zero, or in this case, if test zero equals zero, then message wow message welcome to to the world. Else, if test one equal one, then message uh, learn to walk. Else, if test 16 equals 16, then uh, message. Why did I choose those long things? Sweet 16. Else message anything else. So I guess this is the exact same code written. Uh, but the funny thing is that if you start turning uh, uh, code analyzers on, then th there is an analyzer saying, hey, this should be changed to a case statement, which until my plane rider thought, no, that's a good call because then it can be optimized. But maybe, and, and maybe, uh, maybe the compiler are treating it differently whether there are expressions or no expressions. I, ha I have no idea. Um, maybe I should go poke in, in dark places to see what actually have been generated. Um, but, but clearly, <laughs> the case statement is very powerful. And, and, and as a side note, the case statement in, in my BC script tool is now working and, and will run this just fine. Um, but <laughs> this took me by surprise. I had no idea that. I, I, I think, you know, sometimes you think you know stuff. And, and I clearly know Pascal from back in the days uh, and never doubted how the uh, uh, how, 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 how it worked. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I was mistaken. Um, but uh, at least my, my compiler is now more compatible than it was before. And uh, I hope you learned something from this video. Until next time, let me know in the comments below if, if I, there's something I totally missed here. Uh, but until next time, have a wonderful day, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.